Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over some fixed point binary arithmetic, so I put together this slideshow. So first off, we need to define what we're going to be explaining our numbers in and how we're going to be writing them. So to do that, we're going to just show some notation. So I write my fixed point notations like this. So for signed numbers, it's s plus i dot r, and for unsigned numbers, it's just i dot r, where s is the signed bit, i is the integer bits, and r is the radix bits. 1 plus 3 dot 12 would mean 1 signed bit, 3 integer bits, and 12 bits after the radix. This has a max slash min value of plus or minus 7.9975586 and a resolution of 0 0.00244141. 4 dot 12 would mean 4 integer bits and 12 bits after the radix. This has a max value of 15.9975586 7, and a minimum value of 0 with a resolution of 0 0.0024141. So now we're going to be going over addition, which is kind of the basis for all of our operations along with 1's complement, which then gives us 2's complement and then allows for everything else. So now we're going to be working on some integer and fixed point addition using 8 bits. So with a is equal to 0x96 and b is equal to 0x34, using integers, a is equal to 150 in decimal and b is equal to 52. And when we add them, well, you can see that we get decimal 202. Okay, so now we're going to do this example using both integer and then fixed point notation. And integer is fixed point, just 8.0 fixed point. So here we go, we're going to go to our components, our arithmetic, and we're going to grab an adder. Right click on the adder and set it to 8 bits. We're going to go to our components, IO, input, we're going to grab an input, we're going to set it to 8 bits, we're going to click on it, control C, control V, and connect it up. We're going to grab our carry in, bring it down like that, right click to get rid of your wire, components, wires, and then there should be ground. We're going to go to our components, IO, output, right click, set it to 8 bits, connect the sun, take your carry out, bring it down, copy the uh, output, and set it to 1 bit. You can label this C out, and you can label this sum. <clears throat> you're going to want to label this A, capital A, and you're going to want to label this B. Now what we can do is run the simulation. We're going to put in 96 in hex. So we just type in 96. Then we're going to add to it 34 in hex. And we get CA, which is 202 in decimal. And that's our fixed point in integer 8.0 notation. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at it in fixed point 4.4. And so to do that, I have this Excel table where you can see how we actually get those weighted values. So when a is equal to 9.0110, you can see it's 9.375, and b is 3.25, or 3.25. So when you add them together, you get decimal 12.625. So now we're going to actually do that in digital, the simulator. Now if we wanted to interpret it in 4.4, this is all we have to do. We're going to click the stop simulation button. We're going to copy this. We're going to place it below. Then what we're going to do, instead of having a sum, is we're going to have like uh, the decimal point we're going to represent with like an, with two outputs then. One output above and one output below the decimal point to make it easy to see. And all we got to do then is we're going to use a component, wire, splitter, and we're just going to take our input, make it 8 bits, and our output we want 4, and another bus of 4. Then we're going to take, I guess I can just wire that up like that and then this like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the low bits like that. And if I connect to that, just like uh, actually we might want to reverse it so it makes more sense. And then I'll copy an output. This is going to be int, and it's going to be four bits. And then we're going to copy that. I'm going to call that radix. I don't know what to call it. Radix, I guess. I don't know. Something like that. And now if we... Uh, I just want to make this so that the numbers won't collide. When... There we go. Alright, so now if we run the simulation again... Oops, I don't want single gate. There we go. Now if we run the simulation, when I put in... Oops. 96, there we go. And 
34. Now you can see we have our int is 12 and our read is a, radix is a, so that means we have 12 point and then 1010, so that's half plus an eighth, which is 0.625, so we have 12.625. So we have uh, 9 point, uh, well it'd be a, a, not a half, but a quarter and an eighth, plus 3 point, not a, not a half, not a quarter, but an eighth and that creates CA. So you can look at these numbers, that's the same numbers in two different ways using the same adder. And just move your fixed point notation around. So now we're gonna go look at uh, two's complement. Okay, so now we're gonna go over two's complement. We're gonna take A is equal to zero X 34 and we're going to then perform two's complement on that. So in decimal, that's 52. We're gonna invert and add one from the least significant bit. Doing that then gives us negative 52 in decimal, which is zero XCC. Then we're gonna do the same thing in our 4.4 .4 notation, or well, one plus 3.4 notation. Okay, so now you can see it when fixed point one plus 3.4 notation, we have A is 3.25. If we take not a, and then we add one to it from the very least significant bit, we get the same cc. So all we had to do was break the bus up if we wanted to show it. Okay, so now to do negation, or two's complement, we're gonna go to our components, arithmetic, negation. We're gonna right click, set eight bits. Now we're gonna use, we're just copy our input. And we'll take an output, call it negated, and it's going to be 8 bits output. Now when I run the simulation and I put in hex 34, I get out CC, just as we predicted. So now, to do the fixed point, I would just have to break it out like that before, like we did before, and you would see that C dot C. So now to verify that that Same worked, thing. we're just going to plug CC back into it and check it for both the integer and fixed point notation to see if we come back with the original input. So in the integer format, we take CC, which is negative 52, invert it, and then add 1. And you can see that we get decimal 52 or hex 34, which is what we entered the first time. Now to recover 34 again from the fixed point version. It's the same thing, just with a decimal point in the middle. Okay, so what about multiplication? So to do multiplication, we're just going to take one input and just square it so we don't only have to deal with one input. And so we're going to let a equals 0xff. So in 8 bits, just with integer only, that's 255 squared, which becomes 6, 65,025. Now in fixed point, we're going to do the same thing, and we're just going to put the decimal point in between our numbers. Now we have 15.9375. Now we multiply that and you can see it's the same result as before, just with a decimal point in between. So we just have to use an integer multiplier and we just put a decimal point. Now the reason the decimal point is in between is because we had the same amount of bits above and below. So when you double the, when you double the amount of bits, because that's what happens with multiplication, you double the amount of bits above and below. So now back in digital, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our components, arithmetic, multiply. We're gonna tie our A and B inputs together because we're just squaring. We're gonna do leave that unchecked and we're gonna enter eight data bits. Then we're gonna have our multiply out and our input. And we're gonna make two of these. Actually, no, we're only gonna have one. Because well, you'll see with both. So now if I enter that and we grab an output. We're going to call that square. And on the output, there's not going to be 8 bits. There's going to be 16 bits. It doubles the outputs. 
and yet doubles the output bits. So now if you run it, you see that we don't get any problems. And now if I put in FF, or if I just press down and get it like that, you see that we get our FE01, which is what we had before in uh, hex. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to put a decimal in between it there, and that's how you get your 4.4 .4 notation. So you can just use an integer multiplier and get the notation that you want out. So we just know there's a decimal point in between there. So you can split that up into two 8-bit buses if you wanted. Just like that. Okay, so now we're going to do another unsigned multiplication example, but now we're going to move where the fixed point precision is. So instead of 4.4, .4, we're going to still do a squared where a is equal to 0 uh, xff, but now we're using 3.5 instead of 4.4 .4 notation. So now we have 7.96875, and then when we square that, we're going to end up with 6 bits above and 10 bits below. Okay, so now we're going to go over signed fixed point multiplication and an integer multiplication using a sign. So we're going to multiply a is equal to 0xfb and b is equal to 0x11. In the integer format, we're going to have negative 5 and we're going to have to convert that to positive 5. So we're going to do 2's complement on negative 5, get positive 5, and then we're going to multiply that with b which we get that, and then we have to imply the sign from the 5 again to get negative 85. Now we have to do the same thing in fixed point notation. We have our a, which is negative, we have our b, which is positive. We have to convert our a back to being positive. We know that our sign should be negative at the resu result, so we after the multiplication, we then reapply the sign, and that's how, what we get. So to figure out what we have to do for the signs, we just have to XOR the sign of the two numbers. So positive times positive is positive, positive times negative is negative, negative times positive is negative, and negative times negative is positive. It's just an XOR on the signs. So now you can see if we take our results from before and we try to concatenate it down to having the same number of output bits as input bits, we want to see like what we lose in what kind of precision. So if we were to concatenate bit 7 down to 0 there, we'd get a, b as a result, which would stay within our maximum values for that, and we didn't lose any precision. Versus on the other one, if we were to concatenate, we would lose some precision. Okay, so now in digital, what we're going to do is we're going to take the multiplier that we had before, we're going to right click on it, and we're going to click signed operation. Then we're going to split this input up into two. We're going to call that b. Oops. Uh, BN, just B. We're going to hook that up. Now, if we run the simulation, right click and set this to be FB. FB is negative 5. If you right click on it, you see if it's if we invert, we get 4 and add 1, it's, so that's negative 5. And we're going to do negative 5 times 17, which should be negative 85. Now, to get negative 85, since we clicked on our multiplication, that's correct. It's uh, all ones and then a, b. If you look back at the slides, you'll see that that is correct. And now if we were interpreting this as fixed point, we could then put the decimal point in between, right, right there, between the doublings of the bits. If we wanted to say it was 4.4 .4 .4 input, then we'd get 8.8 .8 out. And then we can cut off the top four bits and the low four bits to get back just f, a, we, and we lose some precision. But that's how that's how you do sign multiplication in digital. You just click the little sign box and there it works. And you can now go verify against what we had in the slideshow. Yeah, so that's how squaring works and that's how multiplication works in fixed point. So, the, I mean, it doesn't really make much sense to call that square anymore. But yeah, if you liked, please subscribe, like the video, and join the Discord. Also, ring the bell and click all notifications. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.